Hello friends. Today we'll be talking about The Winter Road by Adrian Selby. So before we get into The Winter Road, I always think it's important to mention how I structure my reviews or my Let's Talk About videos. I'm weird about spoilers. So I will be very careful not to spoil anything for, for you from the book. I'm not going to give you a beat by beat of what happens. I'll give you my impressions coming away from the book, tell you what I thought about it, and then you can decide if it's for you or not for you. Now with this book, it's one of the rare occasions when I felt okay reading the synopsis because I like to go into books blind. So if you're like me and like to go into books blind, you can probably read the synopsis and be okay. It doesn't give away a whole lot. There's so much more in this book than the synopsis. The synopsis is just a small piece of what happens. Now, with that said, I'm going to give you a little bit more than I usually do. I'm going to give you a little bit more of the story than I usually do in these videos, but it'll be less than you'd get from the, from the synopsis. So just a, a heads up for those of you who, who come here for no spoilers at all. I'm going to give you just a little bit, nothing that's going to spoil anything for you. But if you would like to go into books blind, it may just a little bit. So not, not much, trust me. So the winter road is a standalone fantasy novel. And I think it's safe to say this is grim dark, but it is a standalone. So those of you who uh, are looking for a good standalone book to read, this is one that I would definitely recommend. Now the other books that Adrian Selby has written, they are connected, but you don't have to read them in any order. You won't have anything spoiled for you. If you read them out of order, or, you know, if you read all of them, you won't spoil something that happens in the other book but they are connected. There's some connective tissue, but not directly. So you're safe. If you just want to read this as a standalone, you're, you're good to go. Now I had high expectations for this book because I'd heard so much about it. I uh, have some, some people who watch the channel and some other, some other friends who have told me that they, that I'm, I would love this book. And usually when they like a book and they recommend it to me, I usually like it too. So I had high expectations, especially after talking with Adrian Selby and hearing his story and kind of what he was striving to do with this book, I had high expectations. And, um, this is one of those reads that keeps you thinking after there's some books that you really enjoy and you have a really good time with it and you're done with it and you turn the last page and you, and you, uh, close the book and you say, wow, that was fun. And you move on to the next one. And there's nothing wrong with that. Those are great reads. I've, I've had some of my favorite reads that I've, I've done that with. I've, thoroughly enjoyed it. You turn the last page and you see, wow, that was fantastic. I love that. And then you keep going and you live your life. This is one of those few books and it's happened. It happens with movies or with music that it, it really got to me. And when I say it got to me is that it really kept me thinking. Uh, I finished it yesterday and I was up last night thinking about this book. <laughs> and I was, as I was reading the book, it wasn't just when I finished it. As I was reading the book every day, I would think about it. So I should probably tell you what this book is about. So like I said, very minimal spoilers of nothing that will, nothing that will spoil any major events for you. But the story revolves around Tayer. Now I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that name right, but that's our main character. Now she is an ex soldier who is venturing into an area called the circle. It's like this lawless, uh, part of the, of the world that there's some rival clans that are, that are living in some different areas and it's kind of a lawless area. And she is on a mission to kind of connect the mainland, the, the law, the lawful parts of the world to this other area. Cause that's her home. That's where she's from. Now she's gone off and done some fighting and done some other things in her life, which it gets into in the book, but she's trying to connect this part of the world with the rest of the world. So kind of to reintroduce trade and to do, do some other things to bring everyone together that she's on this mission to go there and to do this. Now, as she ventures, as she ventures back home after she's been gone all this time, she finds that there's some, there's a new warlord that's come to power there in the circle. Now, all of this is in the synopsis. So I'm not going to, it's nothing that's, you won't read in the synopsis. Those of you who are, are familiar with me or my other videos know that I'm very particular about action. In a lot of fantasy books, I think some authors are good at writing action and they get, they just fall in love with writing action and it goes on for pages and pages. Nothing happens 
when these action uh, portions of the book start, you know exactly what's going to happen when the battle is over. You know who's going to live, who's going to die, and it just becomes like a waste of time to read three or four pages of action. It just seems, I just skim through it. I just get bored with it. Not so in this one. <laughs> the, the action is quick. It is violent. It is visceral. And it really disorients you. You feel like you're there in this action. It feels like you're in this person's head and things are happening so quickly. Every sentence in a paragraph can describe an action scene. And by the time you're done with that action scene, you know exactly what happened, but you feel because you're reading it and you feel like it happened so fast that you feel like it was this disorienting, uh, quick, uh, life or death situation. And it feels like the world is spinning. You know, that's how, when you're living in, when you're experiencing things like this, and obviously I've never been in a sword fight, but, but when you're experiencing these, these events that happen quickly, things happen really fast and everything happens quick. So when you're, when you're reading this book, it feels like everything's, everything happens very quickly as things happen quickly. Uh, you know, that not everyone's going to survive. It's not that kind of book people die. And as this story unravels and you, and this journey continues, there are some absolutely devastating, crushing, soul crushing moments that you just know it's not the kind of book that someone's going to come and save the day. And when these moments begin to start, you know that nothing good is about to happen. Another thing that Adrian Selby does really well that I think is really hard to do with text and it doesn't happen very often, but it's building tension. You can feel that the tension builds and builds and builds. And before the action starts, you feel tension, you feel tense, you feel anxious. And it's kind of the part of the movie when the, when the score starts to get louder and it starts to, the, the speed of the music starts to get higher and you feel that anxiety, like something is about to happen. Shit's about to go down. You feel that as you're reading. Now, not, not every time does something happen, but it, there's so many moments that it builds and builds and builds and it builds that tension in you and you can feel that things are about to happen. And as we follow tear th through the circle with her, with her crew, uh, the, the environment all, is also oppressive. You feel like the world that they're in is you never feel safe. You always feel like something that anything can happen. You never relax. And I think you, you get that from the events in the book and you get that from the way that it's presented. And this book is a lot more than just the character venturing into the circle and what happens in the circle is so much more. And when I say that I thought about, uh, you know, she's trying to connect, she's trying to bring, bring, uh, I'm trying to be really careful. She's trying to connect the circle with the rest of the world. So as she, as she goes into the circle, you start to question, who has the right to decide if this part of the world should be connected? Maybe they want to be on their own. Maybe they want to live how they're living. Maybe they don't want to change. Who gets to decide that? It also has me thinking about life, about legacy, about redemption, about, uh, your getting old, about your body breaking down. And as you get older, your body starts to wear out or starts to wear down and you stop being able to do certain things. Uh, this, this book, by the end of it, it really, really, really got to me in a good way, but it kept me thinking about all these things, you know, about life, about love, about, like I said, about legacy, about, um, the legacy you, you leave about, you know, what, what's left behind when you're done, you know, what, what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind that people will remember you for, uh, about, uh, it just kept me thinking a lot about life and a lot about living and, and it, it just, it sounds like a con bad country song. And when I say these are the themes that I pulled out of it, the book isn't overtly trying to, trying to express these themes. It tells it within the story. So it's not banging your head with pay attention to this. It's just, a, it's just the way that the story is told and the, the journey, all of that happens just organically as you're reading. And you can read it just as a story about what I described, or you can pull a lot more out of it. You know, it kept me thinking about the passage of time, about 
no matter how how hard you you try and you push and you and you scrub and you claw that you get to a certain point and there's always another obstacle in front of you there's always someone or something else waiting for you at the top of that mountain that's going to try and put put their foot on your face and try and push you back down and there's some uh really really great moments that like i said i don't, I don't want to give away too much but there are some devastating moments that really echo throughout the book that by the end these moments are still uh, they they matter there's consequences to these big moments and they really change all the characters that are involved and it makes sense because of the events that happen now i can't get to, i can't get into specifics i know I'm, i might be frustrating some of you but i really don't want to spoil anything for you it is one of those books that i can tell you i it kept me thinking when i turned that last page i had to take a moment to just breathe because it's it's one of those that just keeps you thinking long after you're done with it and it just i'm still i'm it's the next day and i'm still thinking about it so i think you can probably guess that i really enjoyed this book and when i say that there's a a long journey involved it might sound it might sound like it's tedious or it's boring but i had a i never because you don't ever feel safe you don't ever feel like the characters are safe like something anything could happen at any moment the journey isn't boring. You feel like you, you have these long journeys, but you don't feel like it's tedious. And this would make a great 10 or 12 episode miniseries on like Netflix or HBO or Amazon or somewhere. Uh, this would make a great miniseries. It is just begging to be adapted. I mean, it, it's, I had, I mean, you could just picture it in your head. You can just picture how awesome it would be if it was adapted. So anyone who's, if you, anyone's out there who's watching, get on it and adapt this book. It is perfect for, uh, for an adaptation. So like I said, needless to say, I, I really loved this book. I'm, I'm still thinking about it. And those are the kind of stories I love. I love the ones that you can read and you, you move on and it's fine. And you, you can still look back and say, Hey, that was a really great book. And there's a, the books that you read that really get to you, that really stick with you, that keep you thinking about bigger things in your own life that you never expected. And that this is one of those type of books that, like I said, just has me, just still has me thinking. So, uh, yeah, loved it. If you're looking for a standalone or just a good fantasy book, this is one of those that you should check out. It is, like I said, it is violent. There are some, some deaths there. <laughs> there's some very, um, troubling moments in it. Uh, so it is, it is, it is dark. It is grim dark. I would say it is my, it, it's hard to say cause everyone has a different definition of grim dark, but I would think it's grim dark and it is, uh, well written and the dialect that's used. There are some things in the dialect that I don't want to spoil, but that, I, that there's some things you'll pick up on as you're reading. That is very, uh, you can tell that a lot of time was put into it just because of those little, little details that are in the book. But the, the journey into the circle is the, is like 20% of what this book, there's so, there's so many other things. There's so many other strings. There's so many other plot threads that it's, that's just the beginning of, of this story. And if it sounds interesting to you, I would definitely check it out. Uh, we are having a deep dive into the winter road with author Adrian Selby later this month, later this month in April of 2022. So check that out. If you have read the book, it will be spoiler filled. If you uh, have not read it yet, do not watch that. <laughs> do not watch that live stream, read the book and then come back and, and watch that. Cause we're going to get it deep into spoilers. And uh, I'm really, really looking forward to that. I'm so glad this is the book we picked for a deep dive. Cause it is just wonderful. I loved it. It's there's a few books this year. Another one is the hay bale by Priscilla Bettis that really stuck with me. It really kept me thinking. There's a couple other ones that I can't think of at, off the top of my head, but that's one of the, one of the other books that really stuck with me that really make keep you thinking long after you're done. And, uh, those are the special, those special moments for me that remind me why I love storytelling, why I love reading, why I love, uh, just, you know, experiencing th these types of, of stories. It's just, it's great. So have you read <laughs> The Winter Road? If you have, let me know down below what you would rate it. As always, I hope this review was helpful. I will talk to you soon.